Hey guys, I wanted to do a video review on the BioCube 32 saltwater tank. Um, pretty sure you guys seen this in fish stores all around. It's a very popular nano reef tank. Um, just wanted to give you my two cents on it. Uh, share with you some tips and some upgrades that I've learned along the way. I've had this tank for about three years, so I've learned a lot, spent a lot. And hopefully you could avoid the same mistakes that I've made uh, through watching this video. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the species that I have. Uh, I have a six-line wrasse, a clownfish, two, dams two blue damsels, a uh, cleaner shrimp, and a fire shrimp that's located down here. Um, I, I know some people are going to say, oh, you shouldn't have both these shrimp in the same tank. So far, they haven't done anything. They haven't fought. They're not territorial. Uh, they stick to their own rocks and corals, and they clean everything just fine without fighting. Also, besides those two shrimp, my other cleaning crew uh, includes a handful of snails, a handful of hermit crabs, and also a sand sifting star. Um, I'm sure you probably you can see them right here. You can probably see the tips hanging out of the substrate. So that sand sifting star is really great for keeping that uh, substrate clean. It helps push the uh, debris up to the top, get that debris pushed into the filter eventually. So it keeps that, that substrate looking clean. Speaking of the substrate, first recommendation, do not get the white substrate. Don't get white uh, fine substrate, like the Carib seed that they sell. I've had it and um, obviously it gets dirty because it's a whiter color. But also, it's, it's such a fine grain that when you try to use a siphon or try to vacuum the bottom up, your, the majority of the stuff you're going to get is just the sand and the substrate, and you're not going to get a lot of the dirt. Whereas this, this black one that they sell, it's a lot more coarse, so when you use a siphon, vacuum, whatever, you're getting mainly the dirt and the water and not the substrate itself. So definitely look into your options if you want the white color try to get something that's more coarse than what they sell uh, with a crib C. but yeah all right let's move on to the upgrades um, first thing you will notice uh, the light hood is gone I think a lot of people will recommend that's your first upgrade a uh, few things about the BioQ hood that they have or that comes with this tank one the intensity of the light is way too bright. Um, I've had issues with algae growth, green algae growth, and it was mainly because of that light. The brightness of it just was insane and there's no way to ramp it down. There's no way to adjust it. Uh, the only functional thing that came with it was a timer, but the timer only turns off the light. It came with, I think, two or three fans in it, which were super loud. Um, you you have to turn it off before you go to bed manually just because the uh, the fans remain on when the timer runs out i opened the fan up or the hood up oiled the fans and it was still super loud uh, i couldn't figure out why i saw a lot of people have the same complaints about it so along with the algae growth and also it damages your corals too that intensity of light was not good for your uh, good for the corals so all that being said yeah get rid of the light I got this LED reef light on Amazon for 80 bucks. Um, I was skeptical, but the reviews were great. I said, let me try it. If I didn't like it, I could just return it. So yeah, went ahead and bought that. And it's been a few years since I had it. Really great for my corals. Um, hasn't done anything bad yet. Uh, the intensity is good. You can change the settings as well. I have two blue, one white on each socket. The middle one, I have one blue, one white, and one purple. Uh, but yeah, you can change the settings to whatever you want. As long as your coral is happy, your fish are happy, and uh, it's easy on the eyes. My setting right now is not this blue. It's just the camera's making it look this blue, but whatever. All right, let's move on to the next uh, upgrade that I did. Uh, so this one was more out of convenience. It's not a necessity, but it definitely helps when it comes to feeding your fish. Um, so it's a, it's a defroster from Innovative Marine. Basically, you have the little tube-looking structure right here with a divider in the middle that's, that has holes cut out. A magnet hangs out on the glass, so you can put it wherever you want in your tank. 
I put it here so that I could just drop my mysis shrimp, uh, the frozen block. It goes right into here, swirls around until it melts, and slowly drops out um, uh, shrimp at the bottom of this uh, chamber, or this container. What that does, it feeds the fish at a slower pace to ensure that all the shrimp is eaten. If you, uh, if you tend to melt yours before you feed them, um, what it does, it overwhelms the fish, especially I only have four fish, some shrimp, uh, and the snails and stuff eat later, but that overwhelms them. They're not able to eat all of them before it gets sucked into that filter. So you want to get something like this to, you know, feed them at a slower pace. Uh, also without this, if you drop a block of frozen shrimp, it's going to float all the way around and hit this fil uh, this, this filter every time so no matter where you drop it out on this tank that power head is going to push it all the way to here and that suction from this probably helps uh, pull it towards it too what that does is the shrimp just sticks here the fish bite at it and the majority of it gets to the filter and you know goes to waste so definitely it was only like you know 20 bucks on amazon not too expensive for what you get um, I'm going to leave a link down in the description below for all the stuff that I mentioned today. Uh, I just can't remember the names right off the top of my head. Right, moving along, the next upgrade that I got was a Wave Maker. Um, definitely worth the price. I think it was only like 30 bucks. Uh, I don't remember the gallons per hour that I got, um, but, you know, well, can't really say much about these things. Uh, they, they create waves. They, they blow the the corals they blow the stuff off the rocks helps keep the rocks and corals clean and the fish like it they they like swimming in that uh that column of water uh gives them more resistance to swim with so works all right let's move on to the back side first thing you're going to notice on this first chamber with the uh, the pump unit or the pump head is I have a media reactor. This is an innovative marine media reactor. Um, the thing I liked about this versus the others, it didn't have a specific water line that you had to use for it. Um, I don't know if you can see that, the pump unit is all the way at the bottom, on, or the pump of this media reactor is all the way at the bottom. Um, so that way I can keep the water levels more specific for my protein skimmer than my media reactor. Uh, the water still goes in, it interacts with the GFO that I have in there, and then it drains out. Uh, you can put bio pellets, activated carbon, whatever you want in there to, or out of those three, GFO, activated carbon, and bio pellets, you can put one of those three in there and it'll do the work. Uh, this helps keep my phosphate levels really in check, and that's why I got it. But yeah, works really well uh, and it fits in this compartment uh, better than the other compartments I found. Uh, let's move on. As I said earlier, the protein skimmer right over here, Innovative Marine again. Um, I did use the BioLife Coral or BioCube Core Life uh, protein skimmer that's designed for this tank. As you're gonna read from comments and reviews, it's not good at all. Uh, it makes a lot of noise. Doesn't work that great at all. Um, you get a lot of micro bubbles even after the, the breaking in period. Um, so I, unfortunately, I couldn't return it. So I just had to eat that cost up. Uh, bought this for a little more money. Let me show you the box. Gives you a better description on how it looks. <clears throat> okay, so here is the box and how it looks uh i know the lighting sucks but yeah the thing about this is you have to make sure the water line of your tank matches the water line of this which on the container itself it has a water line indicator and it's pretty much high up it's like around here um so the way i did it i had to cut the plastic wall here. I know it looks like a bad job, but all I had was some uh, plastic, uh, some wire cutters. 
um, and I was able to cut through the plastic just so I could leave this thing, the protein skimmer hanging down enough so it matches the tank water level. Um, my water level in the tank is great. I don't want to change that just for the protein skimmer. So I just moved that down. Didn't want to use something that caused too many vibrations to cut because you know I didn't want to bother the fish, put them under more stress. But it works fine. Um, it comes with a silencer. Uh, that silencer seems to silence it pretty well. Now, the noise that you're hearing now, that's the protein skimmer. So even with the silencer, it is, you know, kind of loud, but it's definitely better than the BioCube one. Uh, that one was super loud where I would have to unplug it or, you know, yeah, just unplug it at the end of the night. This one runs 24 seven, gets a lot of that dirty water that you're looking for uh, without too many micro bubbles or without any micro bubbles really. All right, uh, moving on. This is a uh, filter media caddy basket. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, the one that came with the BioCube, very flimsy, uh, didn't stay intact well. Um, it, it, it broke easily. I think one or two times after using it, it just broke and went online and found this thing. Uh, and this, you know, this, this is really great. It's well put together. You have three uh, rows in there and the middle, the middle one is, you know, you change the size of it. Um, the top one, I have filter floss, uh, the middle one, I have a chem pure bag and the bottom, I have some bio balls, uh, it comes with this little, uh, water flow green thing that helps, uh, flow the water directly into your filter basket rather than go on over the sides. Uh, that worked really great. Uh, you don't want water overflowing your filter basket. And that's another reason why I didn't want to change the water level just for my protein skimmer. I'd rather change the protein skimmer height, moving it down more than the water level because if I changed it any more, made it higher, uh, the water was going to pretty much bypass the filters and just go over, you know, over all the sides. So you definitely want to make sure your water level is good enough for this first before you do do it for your protein skimmer or for your media reactor. Uh, this is probably the most important part as far as you know your water uh, levels go. The next one is the heater. Obviously nothing fancy about that. Just put any heater you want. Uh, temperature settings are gonna change based on the fish and the coral that you keep. But usually I keep it pretty high. Um, not too, nothing, nothing too crazy. I live in Colorado, so you know, I gotta keep it a little warmer than other areas. Uh, so now for the conclusion, uh, and recommendations, this was aimed, I believe this is still aimed as a beginner all in one, you know, nano tank. Um, it's a hot seller at the fish stores. I know they got me on the marketing schemes of it being a beginner tank. I thought, you know, it was plug and play. That's what they sold it to me as, uh, but you know, after learning about it, it's not a plug and play tank. If you're a beginner and you have a lot of money, then sure, definitely, you know, if you like the design of this tank and you're getting it just for that, then sure, go ahead and get it. But keep in mind, you're gonna have to uh, have a lot of money to make these upgrades. I bought this tank for 500 that came with the stand. Um, with the upgrades and the stuff that I bought that I had to throw away that just didn't work, uh, it came out maybe to a thousand bucks, I believe, or close to that number. Um, these products that I have now have lasted, so I never had to return anything or throw anything away, thank God. Uh, but yeah, it definitely takes a lot of extra money to get to uh, a point where you can have a stable tank, stable environment for your fish without too much frequent uh, water changes. I change my water at least once every two weeks. Uh, you know, scrub the glass, clean it up, 20% water changes every two weeks. And my water parameters have been great. Um, so if you want to have a low maintenance tank, then you know, get these upgrades that I talked about. If you're a beginner that's not looking to spend too much money, you know, trying to see if you like the hobby first before you start going all out, 
there's other options out there. I know the Red Sea makes some good nano tanks. Uh, Innovative Marine makes some, and as you can tell, I have a lot of their products in this tank. The thing about Innovative Marine is they make a lot of good complementary um, devices to put into your tank that fit for it, that you know you don't have to adjust or cut plastic in the back or do whatever. They just make a lot of good high quality products for their tanks. BioCube does make products for their tanks, but it's not high quality. You're gonna see in the reviews and comments, it's, it's not even worth getting. So there are other options for you if you're a beginner and you don't wanna to spend too much money. But yeah, with me, I bought this tank, I couldn't return it. Uh, so I ended up going all out. I didn't want my fish to die, the coral to die, because that was a <laughs> greater investment, you know, and those are living creatures, you don't wanna kill them. So I was stuck with it, made the best of it. Um, hopefully, if you're in the market for this, you can learn from my mistakes uh, and, you know, buy these upgrades that I've, I've mentioned or at least buy something similar to it and you're going to have a good, long, stable uh, life for your tank. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, concerns, uh, critiques. Uh, thank you, guys.